today we trim that bay window. Right, so we're going to improve the efficiency of these old double hung windows by almost 30% just by adding this nice wooden storm window. Nice job, Ryan. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a biggie. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Narragansett, Rhode Island. You know, the original windows on our 1887 Queen Anne Victorian have been a favorite of everybody's. And fortunately, Jeff and his crew have taken the time to restore most of them, including these bay windows right here. And inside, Tommy and Kevin Barker are making sure that the window trim gets the same level of attention. These stained glass windows have an original architectural detail to this house. And now we're getting ready to trim them. And it's going to be a little tricky. Let me show you what we have to do. Here in the living room, Kevin Barker is working on that trim for the bay window. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? How's it going, Tommy? So what do you got here? This is the trim package for the head casing. Yeah, we're doing the bay window right now. So it's all paint grade poplar. Yeah. Um, this head casing is com uh, composed of seven different pieces right now. All right, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven inside there. Yep. Crown right. blocks are the inside tucked in there. Yeah. We got the, it's a one by four for the main body. Mm -hmm. We got a little parting bead that the legs will attach to. That's a nice we get, detail. We got a nice half inch parting strip right here. Yeah. Our uh, crown molding. We got a backer for it, and then we have our uh, crown blocks inside there. Yeah, those are nice. They do a couple of things. They give a flat surface to fasten the crown to, but it really holds this section of the top square. It holds the spring angle really nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's capped off with a half inch one by four. And I see you glued it all together and you put it together with some pocket screws. Yep. So you're working on that section over there? I am. We're finishing up the left side of this head casing. Um, yeah. And then right after we'll attach the legs and go for install. Did you make any templates for these angles? I did. We have our two test pieces and our first piece in the main body is already cut. It's going to be installed here, and then everything else builds off of that. So that'll ensure that you have a nice tight miter there at the joint, and also a nice miter fit at the wall. Absolutely. Well, it looks like you got it under control, but if you need a hand, I'd love to help you. Sounds like a plan. All right. Yeah, I'm good. All right, so we'll put this piece up. This piece goes on top. We'll cut the two angles, and then we're going to pocket screw it from the back and screw it together. All right, so let's uh, mark your angle down there. All right, so these holes are for what? These are going to uh, be used to attach the crown backers. Oh yeah, the little blocks. All right, good. All right, you're ready to attach this one? All right. Screws pull everything together nice and tight. So these are the backers now to hold the crown molding right? That is correct. We're going to tack them on with a brad nail and then we'll fasten them with a screw from the back. All right. All right, so we're going to glue this joint up yep. and then we'll screw it from the back and attach them together. All right. All right. 
work from the top down. Try to get yep. this tightened. How's that? That looks beautiful. How's that look? Yeah, that's Tommy. perfect. I think we take a sixteenth off of it, but we're good. All right. Let's see how this works out. And flush here. How's it look? Pretty tight. Perfect here. Awesome. All right. Ready to go in there? All right. We are ready. Okay. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. <laughs> all right, so. All right, so let's lay this down, upside down. Yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is gonna fit perfect, Kevin. Nice. Nice job. Tight against the wall? Yep, tight against the wall, tight against the case. Awesome, this leg's looking good too. Right, Grab let's... the guns and we can start nailing her off. Sounds like a plan. All right. That looks good. Oh yeah, nice job, Kevin. Not too shabby, thanks for the help, Tommy. My pleasure. Hey, Ben, don't turn off the power to our heating system. What don't are you working worry. on? Don't worry, buddy. It's freezing out here. I can't <laughs> wait to go inside. <laughs> uh, so we just actually finished up this socket and panel setup. Um, so we're getting ready to go inside, maybe turn some power on for the guys working. All right, so the meter socket, that's the thing that sends you the bill. Yes, sir. So what's different here? What's all the additional box? Well, so in the 2020 code, they changed over so that you have to have an external disconnect on your service. And they're doing that for fire personnel, safety people, the grid workers. Uh, so if you're having a problem in your house, they can just walk right up to this thing, shut off the whole house and be safe. And it's good to get everything shut off before you start spraying water inside on a fire. Yeah, good idea. Okay, good. Yep. All right, so that's gonna be a standard now probably everywhere on the yep. outside of the building. 2020 code, everybody's gonna have to all do right. it. So. so what about all this big box though? What else is going on here? Uh, yeah, so this one, you know, not so common on the East Coast, but out West California, it's pretty common to have an exterior panel on your house. Um, so we ordered this one because we've got a, just a really extensive landscape back here. I guess. Look at this um, place. Yeah, your kitchen, pool, yeah. shed, all this stuff. So uh, what we did is we just ran a bunch of pipes all over the yard yeah. to feed that stuff. It all comes right here, and we're going to be able to put those breakers in right here. Way more convenient. So I can turn off the jacuzzi right here or whatever if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What else you got going on? Uh, so, yeah, we can go inside. I'll show you what we got with the main panels in there. The uh, heat's on. Yeah, Come on. the heat's on. Well, Ben, every time I see one of your jobs, I am just amazed. I mean, look at this. It's so neat and perfect. Look at that. Just, it's art. It's really beautiful. Thank you very much. It's how I was taught to do it a long time ago. and. Uh, I still enjoy it, and it's kind of become a calling card That's for our great. work around here. It's so. not typical. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> All right, but we've got two panels here. What's going on here? Right, so we talked about that main disconnect outside, right? Yeah. That main disconnect, this feeder comes through the house and down into this panel and feeds the main panel. Okay. okay? So this is the main panel where we put heavy loads that wouldn't be protected by a generator. Okay. okay? We also have an automatic generator system here. Okay. That's so a, yeah. you got your ATS switch, automatic transfer switch yeah. here. Um, and then off of the ATS, you've got your lighting and essential loads, all that stuff. Refrigeration, freezer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything that you want for comfort yeah. and, and normal yeah. use in an emergency. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. So that's all neat and clean and organized. And you label it all. It's just beautiful. I mean, it's just really amazing. Yeah. Thanks for that. And you know, one of the cool things about these panels now is 
I don't know if you remember a few years ago, they had these breakers with the little curly Q pigtail on mm -hmm. them. Um, industry standard has kind of changed. And what we have now is this captured neutral bar that goes through the panel, OK? So what that allows us to do is take these breakers and just plug them in. Yeah. All right, so this is your neutral plug and your hot pin. So instead of having all those white wires, the neutrals, all on the side, all wired together, all bunched together, it's just right. off that one bus. Each wire just comes right to this breaker, and we have terminal screws for both neutral yeah. and hot. Cool. So we can keep it nice and neat inside, too. It's not just window neat, dressing. Neat inside and outside. Yeah. Great job, my friend. All right, thank you. Well, this patio and the outdoor kitchen is really looking good here, Mark. Oh, this is great. This is that Indiana limestone? Yeah, I was wondering what it is. Yeah, it's their tumbled stone. You can tell by looking at the edges. Mm -hmm. See how they're a little round and beveled? So it's they got the veneer all that nicely yep. there. And all that. Like they're putting it on the side of the foundation. Sure, got to match the foundation. I love it. Yeah. All right, so tell me about this uh, paver here. What's going on with this? I love this. This is the same Indiana limestone. It's obviously their patio stock. This is the Modesto blend, which I love. Mm -hmm. You can see the bigger pieces. So why the gap so big? It's got to be permeable. Oh, right, that's right. right. Remember? So that's why, like I said, these are nice size joints. The yeah. sand, he's going to use sand to fill those in. Those will be great. So Damien and his crew is putting this down. How you guys doing? How you doing, Damien? All right. Yeah, what'd you do for a prep? So we got compacted uh, processed gravel, and we put three quarter inch crushed stone down. Nice. The stone nice. gets pounded in. And that's where it stays until we put the uh, material that goes in the middle of the joints. So the rice stone sits on top of all the drainage down below, yep. which enables you to level everything out. Yep. Right. Well, it's really looking good. Can't wait to see it finished. Looking good, Damien. Thank you. The antique windows on our project were always beautiful, but never efficient. Jeff's crew wants to fix that. Hey Riley, how's it going? Hey Tom, good, how are you? What do you got there? So we got some wood storm windows that we got to put on over at the house um, to increase the efficiency over there. Yeah, I had a feeling you were going to have to put storms on there. When I put those windows in, as nice as they are, I said, eh, you're still going to have some problems. Double hongs, you can't make them really tight. They're going to be drafty, and you're going to have a problem. Yep, definitely. Um, so we're going with nice mahogany storm windows. Oh, that's great. You can paint them up, and it's really going to look original to the house. That's yeah. a nice feature. All right, so how are you planning on doing it? So it's solid mahogany. As you can see, we got a full lap joint here yeah. with a loose tenon in there. So this sits on top. This will sit right on top like that. So you get plenty of glue surface. You've got a mortise there. Tenant will go in, glue that down. That's not going to go anywhere. Oh. Nice tight. Right. And I like the fact that you have a rabbit right here. That's nice. Yep, the rabbit's here. So once it's all glued and put together, we're going to put a quarter inch laminated glass and then we've got um, stops that are going to be pinned in from the outside. So if you ever have that. to take that out, you can pull the stops. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so you want to get started? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so you saw set up here, you've got some wood. Why don't I start cutting the rabbits and you can set up that other saw? Sounds good to me. All right. <laughs> Now I gotta reset the saw to remove that piece. Part epoxy, great for exterior. That stuff really holds well. Yep. 
So we'll glue all the joints, put the dominoes in, put it together and clamp it. All right. 4 and 3 eighths, right on. Awesome. All right, we'll let this set up, send it off to get painted, put the grooves in for the weather stripping. We can install the glass and put them on the house. Sounds like a plan. Great. All right, we're getting the brackets on now. You can see we've got a couple of brackets at the top of the window already installed. And on the back, we've got a weather stripping that goes down across the top and under the bottom. And these brackets will actually hang up top. They're gonna go on the, just like that. So because this window will be removable, we just pick up on the window, tilt forward, pick up on the window, and it'll fall out of the opening. So Riley's finishing up the last bracket, and then we can get this hung. All right, you good? All right. Good. Hang it on the hooks. It's good. There it is. Close it up. Seats on that weather stripping, nice. Now, if you notice, we've drilled a couple of weep holes right here across the bottom. So if any condensation should form inside, it will run out. A lot of people don't understand that by drilling the correct size hole for a screw, the less chance of splitting the wood, the screw will actually hold better. Perfect. Everything's ready, weather strip. Do you know that a, a storm window like this can improve the efficiency of the window behind it? 20 to 30 percent. Wow, that's just what we need with these old windows. Oh yeah, it's a big difference and they look great. Nice job, Riley. Since almost the beginning of this project, we had plans for a shed here in the backyard. And now, with just a couple weeks left to go, you'd think we're behind. But Rich, fortunately, good to see you again. Good to see you. You've got a plan to get us out of this jam. For sure. So um, I guess it, it all starts at the factory where we um, set everything up. But when we get on site, what we look for is the nice crushed stone base, which we have here. It's excellent. It gets a, it's a good base for our sheds to go on because it drains well. Critters don't like to nest in it, and it sets with the block really well, so it's a good start. And the reason we're not way behind here is because you guys have actually been building for us for quite a bit of time. Right, so what we do is before um, we bring it out to the site, we make sure that we have all the customers' um, special order plans and details. We build the walls on site, so we lay them down 16 on center, just like the home would be. We sheathe it on site. Uh, Tyvek, like this customer's requested, we put the siding on if they've requested, windows, doors get installed, yep. and then we load it up and we bring it out to the site. And the result is, is that we're going to have a shed by the end of today? By the end of today. And we've got a house that's in the historic district, so they've had some say in what it looks like. You guys have taken that into account for the shed as well. Yeah, for sure. So what we do is we take the customer's request into account, the historical district request into account. Um, and on this building specifically, what we've done is we've matched the roof shingles exactly. We've also done cedar shakes in the gable truck. Uh, wood cedar shakes so we're trying to take what we can do with our products and buildings and match the customer's house almost exact if we can and what we do from there is uh, we bring it out we try to center it on the the space that they've given us and from there we frame the floor we square up the floor itself and then we level it as you see these guys doing right now gotcha once it's level, we'll take the, sheet, uh, the rest of the floor sheathing, we'll lay it out, we'll nail it on and secure it, and then we'll start putting the walls up. And you've got a couple other details that you put in for us as well, which we'll see as it goes up, but let's not slow your guys down, let's awesome. keep the building going. Perfect, thank All you very right. You don't need any big equipment to get them in when it's this size. That's nice, right? <laughs> so I can start to see some of the details that you were talking about um, that help us get a match to the house. I'm, sure. I'm seeing the shingles in this gable end right here. Yep. So what we've done is we've put cedar shake in the gables to exact match the house. Yep. Um, we've upgraded the overhang so that it's cottage overhangs added six inches. So this rake board right here, the way this is bumped out? Yep. 
That's Evo a little extra. There. Yeah. Um, we've put some transom windows in there to match the detail in the house. Yeah, I can see So those. they're That's right nice. below your, your vents. Right. Um, we've also upgraded the door to a nine light just to add some more glass into some light for inside the building. Gotcha. Um, when it comes to a step up on the roof line, we've exact matched the asphalt shingles and we've also added Copper Valley so that they match the house perfectly. Oh, that's nice. So we're actually going to get that asphalt on this roof as well. Absolutely. Okay. And as I look at the house right here, um, you know, I can see the shingles up top and the gables, but then down below on the sidewalls, we've got uh, claps. Is that what we're getting here? Yep. We're going to put cedar clapboard on the walls here, exactly match how the house is. We're also going to add a whiteboard in between where the cedar shake is to the clapboard so that we add that defined uh, wall to truss. So definition. above this window line where I'm seeing that horizontal white trim, uh, in our case, we've got the red rosettes there. We're going to get that same white trim board here. We're going to get the white trim minus the rosettes. If yeah. the customer feels they want it, they could probably add that after. Beautiful. Nice. Ah, I like it. That's going to help it fit in. Good sure. Rich, just as you promised, the shed in less than a day. Not yes, bad. Sir. Not bad at all. And a good match to the main house as I see the roof. That's a perfect match to what we have over here. Yeah, so what we did is we exactly replicated what they had for asphalt shingles, put the copper valleys in to match exactly two so that yeah. everything is perfect for the customer's house to match the shed. Same goes for the sidewall up in the gable. We've got the uh, shingles up top, claps down below, just like the main house too. Tommy, you approve? I do. The vertical siding, the horizontal siding looks great. This is the clapboard you use? Yes, sir. Red cedar? Red cedar. Very nice. And I like this little shelf that they have right there, that little rabbit cut. So you don't have to measure the roll. You get perfect oh, nice. spacing. Perfect reveal every time. Nice yes. idea. Yep. Speed and efficiency for you guys, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate the help once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So, Tommy, next time we get started in the kitchen with the cabinets coming in, and we're going to start off with a big center island. Yeah, that island is big. The cabinet's going to look great, but we're actually installing a range hood and it's kind of a unique design. It's going to be interesting to see All that right. go in. Looking forward to that. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. And this old house here in Narragansett. So shed the day, huh? Pretty good. Yeah, it looks real good. Nice job. Riley. Hey, Tom. The cabinets are looking good. I love this island. It's huge. Next time on This Old House. These cabinets are really made well. I like the carcass or the boxes here. A 5 8 plywood. Check oh, this out. Oh, look at that. Lights. Lights. You turn on as you open. That's handy. All of them. Yep. Yeah. So I'm here to give you a hand with the range hood. Yep. That's, that's the spot. That's where it goes.